In this video, we're going to be working with the double angle formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. We're going to go through two examples together, one involving uh, this problem here, another problem involving solving an equation using the double angle formulas. So let's dive in. The first thing we want to do is we want to look at this uh, sine theta equals 15 over 17, and we want to calculate what's sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, and tangent of 2 theta. But notice they're giving us this restriction that our angle theta is between pi over 2, which is 90, and pi, which is 180, which puts us here in the second quadrant. So what you want to do is you want to draw a triangle, drop your perpendicular to the x-axis. Uh, this is your angle here at the, cent uh, the central angle here near the origin. And we know that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And if we do the Pythagorean theorem, we get 8 for this missing side. This is an 8, 15, 17 Pythagorean triple. But notice we're going to the left, so this is going to be a negative 8. So now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and calculate, see, this angle theta. Imagine if we were to double that angle, okay? Now we don't know the exact angle measurement, how many degrees or how many radians, but if you can kind of visualize that angle, if it was to be double that or twice that angle, what would be the sign of that angle, the cosine of that angle, and the tangent of that angle. And we're going to use these double angle formulas, which take the uh, twice the angle, and it writes it in terms of just the single angle, just one theta. So let's go ahead and figure out what is sine of two theta by expanding it. Again, remember, these are identities. Identity just means that the left side and the right side are identical. You can interchange them, right? They're equivalent. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to say, well, the sine of theta we know is 15 over 17. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's negative 8 over 17. And 2, you can think of it as 2 over 1. So if we multiply all the numerators, we get, let's see, negative 120 times 2 is negative 240. 1 times 17 times 17 is 289. The sine of double our angle, or 2 theta, is negative 240 over 289. Now if we want to find cosine of double this angle. We've got three options for our uh, double angle formula for cosine. We can either do cosine squared minus sine squared theta, or two cosine squared theta minus one, or one minus two sine squared theta. And you might be saying, Mario, like, why do we have three different formulas and which one do I use? Well, you can rewrite these formulas using your Pythagorean trig identities. Remember how sine squared plus cosine squared equals one? So by making a substitution, you can show that all three of these are equivalent to one another. But in this problem, I think what I'm going to do is just use this last one because they already give us what the sine of single theta is, just one theta. So I can just put that in place of sine here and square it. So let's use that bottom one, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. We know that sine of theta is 15 over 17, and we're going to square that quantity. Okay, so squaring the numerator gives us 225. 17 squared is 289. Uh, 2 times 225 is 450. One, you could rewrite that as 289 over 289, because anything divided by itself is 1. And then what's 289 minus 450? That's negative 161 over 289. So this is, uh, let's write that over here, cosine of 2 theta. Uh, is equal to negative 161 over 289. And now if you want to calculate the tangent of 2 theta, you've got a couple options. One is you can use this formula here, which we're going to do, but you can also think of uh, tangent of 2 theta is equal to the sine of 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta. So if you've been working with uh, the trigonometric identities, you know that sine over cosine is tangent. But if this is tangent of 2 theta, it has to be sine of 2 theta over cosine 2 theta. So if we were to take negative 240 over 289 divided by negative 161 over 289, that comes out to uh, 240 over 161. That's the tangent of 2 theta. But let's go ahead and use our uh, tangent double angle formula just to practice that. So that comes out to 2 uh, times the tangent of theta, which now tangent of theta is what? It's the opposite over adjacent. So that's negative 15 over 8 divided by 1 minus 
the tangent squared of theta, so negative 15 over 8 squared. Okay, so now we just have a little bit of arithmetic to do. Uh, let's see, what does this come out to? 2 is like 2 over 1. We can do a little cross-reducing here, so that comes out to negative 15 fourths. This comes out to 225 over 64, so 1 minus 225 over 64. Of course, 1, we could write that as 64 over 64, right? 64 over 64. 64 minus 225 is how much? It's negative 161. So now we have negative 15 fourths over negative 161 over 64. Of course, when you divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. Let's see, the 4 and the 64 you can cross reduce. And what's negative 15 times 16? That's negative 240 divided by negative 161. The two negatives cancel. And you can see we're getting the exact same answer we did by taking sine divided by cosine. So you can check your work that way. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for number two, we want to solve this equation cosine of 2x minus cosine of x is equal to zero. How do we do that? Well, the, the challenge here is that we've got this double angle and we have this single angle. Wouldn't it be great if we could get everything in just terms of 1x, just a single angle? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the cosine double angle formula. And again, we have three choices. So we want to be strategic here. A good substitution would be to use this middle one. This will allow us to get everything in terms of just one trig function cosine. So that's what we're going to do. Let's replace this with 2 cosine squared x minus 1, then minus this cosine x here equals 0. Now let's go ahead and write this uh, a little differently. Let's put it as 2 cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Now doesn't this look a lot like a quadratic? Something like this. How would you factor this quadratic trinomial? Well, let's see if we can factor it into two binomials. We could say 2x times 1x gives us 2x squared. Uh, negative 1 times positive 1 multiplies to negative 1. And you can see 1x and negative 2x adds to the middle term, negative 1x. But notice we're not dealing with x's here. We're dealing with cosines of x, right? So instead of uh, x here, I'm going to write this as 2 cosine x plus 1 and cosine x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now that we have it factored, let's set each factor, each group, equal to 0 and solve. That's our zero product property. So if we take 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0, okay, let's subtract 1 from both sides. So 2 cosine x equals negative 1, divide both sides by 2, we get cosine x equals negative 1 half. And this one, if we set cosine x minus 1 equal to 0 and add 1 to both sides, we get cosine x is equal to 1. So now let's go to our unit circle and let's ask ourselves, where does cosine equal negative 1 half? Well, that would be right here at 2 pi over 3 and over here at 4 pi over 3. If you need to review the unit circle, check out uh, one of my unit circle videos. And then where does cosine equal 1? Remember, cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle, and that's going to be right here at 0. Okay. Now, depending on how the problem is written, if it said, okay, solve this equation between 0 and 2 pi, then we would just list these angles once around the unit circle. I'd say 0, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. But if it doesn't say that and it wants a general solution, what you notice here is that these are equally spaced, right? They're 120 degrees apart, like 120, another 120 is 240, another 120 is 360, and you can keep repeating that. So what we could say is we could say x, our angle, is equal to 0 plus multiples of 2 pi over 3, where n is an element of the set of integers. So you don't want to have n be a half or a third or something like that. Zero, of course, is nothing. So I would probably just condense this down into saying x equals 2 pi over 3 times n. Again, where n is an element of the set of integers. And you got it. So great job if you're able to follow these examples. If you want more practice uh, working with double angle formulas, I'll put another video I did talking about 
double angle formulas right there. Follow me there and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you in that video.